Hey guys, I just recently picked up the new GoPro Hero 8 and I just wanted to give it a quick go with trying a bit of photography with it. I just wanted to try out the RAW photography mode as well as some of the in-camera processing like the HDR mode and things like that and just to see what type of quality, quality I can get. Let's push the RAW format that you get out of the camera and see how good the quality in terms of the detail or the noise and that type of thing. So in this shot here, I was towards sunset and it's quite a high dynamic scene it's quite a bright light on the horizon and there's quite good shadows coming up on the right hand side of the hills the rolling hills there so it's quite a nice scene to try out and push the dynamic range of the shots that are coming out of the camera so I took this shot with the HDR in camera processing and with the raw mode and then processed the raw photo in Lightroom myself just to compare how the two were against each other and I, I was actually quite impressed with how good the in-camera HDR was you can see a little bit of difference in the sky there's a little bit of more artifacting and a little bit more halo happening in the sky with the in-camera HDR but I feel like the rest of it is fairly comparable it's more just subjective whether you like one or the other the way that it handles the bringing up how much you want the highlights or how deep you want the shadows and that type of thing. So in this next shot I was exploring this little area in Christchurch, it's got lots of graffiti, it's like a little car park area, but I thought it would be quite a cool shot just to try out and see how the colour reproduction is on the shot and just the little details that you get coming out of the camera. And as you can see it's quite, you do get quite a good amount of detail, it's a quite flat day so I'm not pushing the lighting too much. But I was pretty pleased with how much detail there was and I didn't have to sharpen the image or anything like that. It was all pretty decent overall. Now in this shot I'm here at the Carbor Cathedral in Christchurch. This was built shortly after 2011 earthquakes to replace the cathedral that was affected in those bad earthquakes. But it's actually made up of cardboard cylinders on the roof there and it's quite an interesting building to go inside as well. But I thought this would be quite a cool shot with the triangles, the multicolored different triangles and this line of glass on the front there and you can see deep into the cathedral. I thought it would be quite good for like pull, how well it pulls up the shadows to try and see more into the building and how much colour I can get out of the triangles at the top there. Just sort of testing out the waters and different types of shots and just seeing how well it does. So in this shot I did have to straighten the the overall shot because the focal length of the GoPro is quite wide but there is in Lightroom there's some presets to uh, apply a preset from the GoPro and it will sort of correct the distortion to some degree so you do get quite a nice clean line through that but you can see in the I was quite pleased with how the triangles at the top turned out they're quite vivid and quite a good amount of saturation I was able to bring into the scene and even bring out the shadows in, in, the in the foreground with the glass there you can see it more into the cathedral itself and you do get quite a lot of details back bringing up the shadows now as I mentioned the, the, the GoPro does shoot quite a wide angle especially in RAW you can't choose different focal lengths you're stuck on the wide mode and to be fair the lens on the GoPro sort of natively is wide and the other modes that you can choose are sort of digital processing of the original wide format so you can get narrow but it's more like a digital zoom or a digital adjustment but here I just want to again try out different types of landscape shots and see how the dynamic range is overall because you quite a bit of shadow in the foreground but there's quite lit nicely in the background there so you can see here it's quite wide angled because I'm getting quite a bit of the grass that was standing right near so it's sort of a little bit of adjusting to for me as I'm used to shooting a slightly more sort of narrower, still wide angle but more narrow than a GoPro does get so I think overall it, in terms of a composition for a GoPro shots you want to have something quite close to you in the foreground even if it's a landscape shot just getting something to sort of anchor your eye in the foreground as it helps give a little bit more of the scale like in this shot here it's a little bit hard to know where things are exactly like how close is that hill in the foreground or how far away am I and it's a little bit harder to choose 
and pick, pick that out without something obvious in the foreground. So this is just around the other side of the hill where our last was and there's this nice little line going across where the hills here where you can see the sun hitting the front of them and some nice deep shadows on the left hand side and I thought that would be another shot where you can try and bring up those shadows in editing and just get a feel for how that handles in the from the raw images out of the GoPro. So in the shot here you can see I didn't actually bring up the shadows too much as I was trying to get at least a nice looking shot, uh, not just for the sake of rising up the shadows too much, but I did, I was in the process of testing out the camera, I was also just getting to grips with what kinds of compositions work well with this wide angle lens. So in this shot here, I have tried to introduce a bit of the bushes that are in the front here, and I feel it's slightly better, but I'm still sort of t testing the waters there to see what kinds of how close a subject should be or that type of thing in this wide angle but one thing I didn't notice is you get quite a lot of glare when the sun is at the far side of the camera so at either side of the frame you do get quite a lot of glare you do get slightly less glare if it's more centered in the frame but I think that's mainly due to the sort of fisheye type of effect it's gonna be more pronounced at the edges so this next shot here now is much more lower light you might not be able to tell so much in this video, but it was actually quite dark where I was, like, standing. As I'm quite a bit, I'm sort of in the shadow of the mountain behind me. But you can see the sun is still just peeking above the horizon and it's hitting those mountains in the distance there. And I thought that would be a, it's quite a dramatic shot actually in terms of the lighting. So here I'm just trying to get a nice sort of panoramic shot with the GoPro. And I'm trying to push out the GoPro a little bit more away from me because it, just to get away from where I'm standing, it's catching a lot of the foreground where I'm standing, which is not the type of composition I'm after. So this is more just getting adjusted to how the focal length works. But I was also curious to see how much noise it would get in this shot. I think I, I did set the GoPro to be a max of 800 ISO in this shot, so I wasn't going above that. So, so in this shot I did bring up the shadows quite a bit because it was quite a dark scene I was in but you can see it's really the details really kept there overall and at, even the, kept the colors pretty decent in the shadowy areas as well so it, it does help hold up quite nicely the only thing I did notice that was slightly different was the sky you're seeing some slight haloing and things so that's something that will happen in, even in a mirrorless camera or something but it is a bit more pronounced in this shot so this is a more extreme example of a high dynamic range shot and here again I want to try out the HDR in camera processing and shooting it as a raw image and editing it afterwards in Lightroom and just trying out slightly different scenes to see what how good the HDR is in camera and what type of scenes it fails at or what's it good at versus doing it manually and editing myself. So this is quite an extreme scene where that you can see on the horizon you got quite a deep dark hill just below the sun there and you get some lots of vegetation and bushes in the foreground which do have pretty drastic shadows on them as well so in terms of the in-camera HDR processing I felt like it, was, it went a little bit overboard here you can see in the foreground everything is quite brightened and it's got sort of a yellowy tint to it it feels like and overall yeah it does I can see what it's trying to do but it feels like it's pushing it a little bit too hard versus my raw photo I edited myself has a bit more realism it's not so hdr -y, if you know what I mean and it's just more of a natural look so I felt in this situation the in-camera HDR is being a little bit too dramatic and I, f I think from my testing it seems like it applies the same level of HDR no matter where you are so depending on the scene it won't really adjust how strong the HDR is but the image will appear more natural if the scene doesn't require too much pushing from the in-camera processing. The final shot here is more at night time just exploring the city and this is pushing the camera a little bit to its limits but it was just to see the extremes of how well it handles this type of situation. 
So I think I am at more around ISO 3200, which is not what you want to be shooting, but it was more just to see how it, how much grain I get, or how the shutter speed and all that type of thing. So the shutter speed seemed to be fine. As you can see, you do get a fair bit of noise in this shot. So in the bottom left hand side especially, you can quite clearly see quite a bit of noise. But this is from me pulling up the shadows quite a bit, just to see how much detail I can get back. So I think the GoPro is not so good at that low light, but that's quite understandable considering how small the sensor is. But I am going to continue testing out the camera in different photography situations and begin to get a feel for what types of shots work well with this field of view and with the GoPro sensor in general and maybe try and take advantage of its size and, its, and how rugged it is and try and get more unique com compositions that aren't necessarily to do with image quality but more positioning or action or that type of idea. So I hope you liked this week's video guys and I appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thanks!